I need somebody to put a praise on that word. Somebody just throw your head back and shout new thing, new thing. Do me a favor, tap your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's time to go higher. New levels, new dimensions, greater depths, higher heights. Tell somebody we're going higher. Hallelujah. The program right here calls for prayer. And normally we would say it's prayer time. But the word has already been given. And I don't know what it is that you might stand in the need of. But you've got to believe that God can and he will do just what he said. The word has already been given that he is fell on this place. And if you tap into the tune in the word of God, whatever you need is already done. Oh, you got to believe that it's already done. He already fixed it. He's already saved. He's already healed. He's already delivered. He's already made a way out of no way. He already paid unexpected bills. He's already done it. You gotta expect that thing even before you see it. Even before you get it. You got to know that it's on the way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, 
it to your name. Hallelujah. Listen here. Let me tell you something real quick. We're going to move on. I have an 18-month-old great nephew that God placed in our care to raise. And the other day I start making a cake and every time he hears the mixer, when he hears the mixer, he runs into the kitchen with anticipation. Yeah. He's limited in his vocabulary. So he just stands there with his hands folded, waiting. <laughs> Cause he hear the mixer. Come on, come on. <laughs> but this is the part that blessed me. When the mixer stops and I pull out the red spatula, he starts saying, mmm. Mmm. He say, mmm. And he get antsy and he say, mmm. Now he ain't got it yet, but he knows what's coming on the spatula. I, I, I dare you to trust God and know that it's already coming. Even before you get it, <laughs> when you get that bad report, all you got to do is say, mmm, that means some good's coming. <laughs> when you don't know how to make it, just say, mmm, mmm. <laughs> he about to make a way. When you didn't ask God for something, and you don't see it, and you ain't got it yet, just say, mmm. Something good is coming your way. Praise him for what he's already done, and you ain't got it yet. Yeah! I dare you to give him a praise for it. I dare you to just say, mm. It's coming. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, choir. Your prayer requests have been answered.
say this and that. Somebody say this and, and that. that. I put it all in his head. This and that. I put it all in his head. This and that. I put it all in his head. and that was if it wasn't for the word. We wouldn't know what it felt like to give God praise if it really wasn't for the word. It's the word that keeps us. It's the word that sustains us. Oh, I love the dance and the dance is fine, but what happens after the dance? Yes, 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 yes. Uh Uh, What happens when the music stops? We need to hold on to the word of God. Amen. And we have one in our pastor, Pastor Dale D. Tucker Sr. Amen. You can clap your hands. Those of you that are streaming with us, we thank God for you. As you prepare yourself to hear the word from this great man of God, this man that God has placed over our souls, my prayer is that God continues to bless him. Even as he mounts this desk on today, Remove everything from him that's not like you, O God. We come against the naysayers and the spectators, but we come anticipating mm, a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. We would ask that you would stand as we would receive our pastor, Pastor Dale D. Tucker Sr. Sing it. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. <laughs> Beautiful light. Come on, what's his name? Jesus, the light, the light of, of the world. Grab your neighbor by the hand as we go to the Lord in prayer. Most holy and all wise God, we come on this moment just to pause to tell you thank you Lord to be honest we have so many reasons to be thankful we don't know where to start God we would ask that you would not take offense to us not being able to declare all your good works 
but we would ask that you would just humbly accept our thank you. You woke us up, you brought us here, you've kept us, you've kept our minds, you yet preserve our bodies. God, we have so much to be thankful for. God, I want to personally thank you for your presence today. God, you're such an awesome wonder in my soul. And I stand today, God, to be used by you. I pray, God, that you would take my mind, keep it clear, keep it focused, think with it, feed me as I feed your people. Let everything that comes out of me or on me be acceptable in your sight. God, it's our prayer that we're no longer just hearers of your word, but be doers also. God, if I can make a request, I only have one. That your kingdom will come in earth as it is in heaven. It is in this prayer we seal it in Jesus' name. The only name that matters, Jesus the Christ, amen. Can you help me give God some praise? I know we've shouted, I know we've, we've ran, we've cried, we've clapped, we've stomped, we've... But if you would just help me, let's corporately just give God a praise of thanksgiving. I come today just to say, hmm. Oh, listen, if I don't have anything else to say, I can say, Do me a favor, just look at your neighbor, don't say nothing, just say, hmm. Now tell him he's been just that good to me. Oh, God. Oh, Lord. He's been just that good. And for those of you that may have come in late or logged in with us late, I want you to just go back and watch the stream. You'll understand what my mmm really means. Can you help me celebrate our executive pastor, Elder Janet Kimball Smith? Help me celebrate God's man, the anointed one, Pastor Brian E. Winbush. And let me again publicly say thank you for your word on last week. Amen. I almost got kicked out of my hotel room last week from streaming live. And he preached and backed himself up while he was preaching. Listen. And let me say to you, sir, do not be afraid of the journey the Lord has you on. Amen. As prophetess was speaking into you, he told me for you that he would be that pillar by day and that pillar of fire by night to guide you in your journey. You said it, you preached it. Don't allow anybody to stop you from your assignment. Amen. Tap three people and tell them that word was for you too. That word was for you too. I want to thank God for all the gifts that God's given to us here in this part of the vineyard. Our elders and ministers, our deacons, our deaconess, our trustees. To all of God's people, to my lovely wife, I thank God for you, Lady Tammy, on today. I'm standing in awe. I believe there is a word from the Lord on today, but I'm standing in awe. If you will, might, might, won't mind giving me a minute to explain. I'm very transparent at times. I think too transparent. Um, but um, 
many of you may not know that I am in a um, dual master's program right now. Um, and my week is, is very, very um, time consuming just from the workload from school. And uh, my lovely wife, she, 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 she makes an effort to ensure that I'm timely in my assignments to give her time and to make sure the word is prepared. Um, so she asked me, this is, this is where I'm going, she asked me on, on yesterday morning, is the word prepared? Because she knew I had two assignments still due by midnight last night. I said, yes. <laughs> the word is ready. And then the Lord woke me up this morning. I promise you, he woke me up this morning. My alarm had not gone off, so I know it was the Lord. And he took me to the book of Nahum. I said, God, I've never preached a message in Nahum. I've never taught a lesson in Nahum. What is in Nahum? I'm trying to tell you. I'm telling you the truth. I said, Lord, uh. I thought I was going back to 2017 and preach, making it on broken pieces. That's what I thought. But he woke me up early this morning. <laughs> Only, watch this, here it is. This is why I'm in awe. Only to confirm the word that's already been spoken. The media, the media team asked me, you know, I send them my messages. You know, when I come in, I usually have my phone out. Y'all probably think I'm texting. I'm talking to the media staff, sending my message so they can prepare, streaming live and everything, et cetera, et cetera. And I sent the, the verse, and they said, do you have a title? I said, no. I don't even have a subject topic for this message, and now I understand why. I'm standing to confirm what God already said through the prophet. So if you would go with me to Nahum. It took me a minute, so I'm gonna give you a minute. Just before you get to the New Testament, there's a small book by the name of Nahum. It was strenuous for me to find it, so I'm not going to press any stress upon you. You can go to the front of your Bible to find the page number, or you may click on the scripture at the top of your app and search for Nahum. We're going to the first chapter, verse 7. I solicit, solicit your prayers this morning as I stand on this fresh word, <laughs> literally. About two and a half hours of preparation. Nahum 1, 7. And it reads, the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knoweth them. He knoweth them that trust in him. Oh, since I don't have one, I'm going to let the message preach itself. But as you take your seats, tell somebody if you really mean it, I trust him. Take your seats in the presence of the Lord. I trust him. Despite the great revival in the time of Jonah, Nineveh has now sunk to new lows, and God's judgment is on the way. During the time of, divided, of the divided kingdom, approximately about 150 years after Jonah's visit to the same city, God said, enough is enough. 
My brothers and sisters, my God, your God, our God, is a jealous God. And he will call us to account for what we do and what we don't do. He will call us to account even our attitudes and our motives. We might not feel the consequences, so we might think we're getting away with dishonesty, but tell somebody God will have the last word. Can I tell you the truth that we tend to only share with you the characteristics of the Lord that will bless you? But let me challenge some of you with this truth. The Lord is a jealous God. He's filled with vengeance and rage. He takes revenge on all those who oppose him and continues to rage against his enemies. The Lord is slow to get angry. And you can keep playing with him if you want to. But his power is great. And he never lets the guilty go unpunished. If you keep pushing him, he will display his power in the whirlwind and the storm. He is so awesome that the billowing clouds are the dust beneath his feet. He is so authoritative that at his command, oceans dry up and rivers disappear. The lush pastures of Bashan and Carmel fade and the green forests of Lebanon wither away. In his mighty presence, the mountains quake and the hills melt away. The earth trembles and people are destroyed. Who can stand before his fierce anger? Who can survive his burning fury? His rage blazes forth like fire, and the mountains crumble into dust in his presence. I don't know about anybody else in this room, prophet, but I don't want to be on the wrong side of the fence with God. But in the midst of Nahum's discourse of God's judgment, he says some words of encouragement. He says the Lord is good, a strong refuge when trouble comes. He is close to those, watch this, that trust him. The great design of religion is to bring us to God and to true blessedness. And in order to do this, we must have confidence in God. Tap three people and tell them we need to have confidence in God. So Nahum does not promise the people anything. He only instead makes a declarative statement. The Lord is good. By his goodness, he is talking about the benevolence of God. Now, this is rather essential in the characteristics of God uh, and that is abstract or distinct. Speaking of his perfection, God is infinitely good. God is immutably good. He is universally good. His goodness extends to all creatures and works. I know you are experiencing an uncomfortable moment in your life, but the Lord is good. Even in handling out consequences, the Lord is good. Whatever Goodness can be found in us is only made possible, be possible because the Lord is good. God is the source of all that is good. His source is unlimited. He is not dependent on anyone or anything for him to be good. The active character of his divinity speaks about him doing good. And what I like about it is that he is good to each and every one of us, even in our own various and diverse condition. 
He is good to the sinner. He is good to the saint. He is good. If you want to know how I made it, all I can tell you is that the Lord is. If you're pondering how I'm yet making it, I cannot explain it. I don't have the answer. All I can tell you is that the Lord is. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Why? Because he is good. Can anybody testify that the Lord's been good? Oh, come on, I need some people to talk back to me. No matter what's going on in your life or in mine, God is still good. Our circumstances and our pressures don't make counterfeit of his goodness. Our frustrations and our problems do not discredit his goodness. God is still good. He was good to me last year. He was good to me on yesterday. He was good to me this morning. All I'm trying to tell you is that God is just being that good. If you can take inventory over your life, you can have to testify that God has been good. You, 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 you know he's been good to you. All creation reflects his goodness. All creation has to speak toward his goodness. And in the great plan of redemption, goodness is revealed in all of his generosity, his glory. We enjoy his goodness in all of our blessings, our privileges, our immunities. That means those things you should have been held accountable for. All the promises and ordinances that he gives to us. His goodness is made manifest in our justification, our regeneration, our adoption, our sanctification, our preservation. I need to get to my next point, and I, but I wish I had somebody in here that can testify that God is good. God's wrath is good. God's righteousness is good. God is good in his entirety. There is nothing about God that is not Good. There, God gives to his children all that is good. His every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord because he is good. Nothing God creates is not good. Everything he does and accomplishes is good. We cannot separate what is good from God and what is God from good. Somebody shout, he is good. The Lord is good. Good. Then, then the man of God declares God is a stronghold in the day of trouble. In other words, he is a place of refuge. He's a place of retreat. He's our defense. He is our stronghold. These words are definitive in the attributes of God. He is our fortress. He is our fort. He is our castle. He is our citadel. He is our tower. He is our bunker. Watch this. Listen, listen. My son and my daughter, when she was of age, every now and then would like to play a game and hide from us. And what they would do is get blankets and pillows and sheets and start building a fortress. And when it was time for us to come and locate them, they knew that if they hid on the inside of the fortress, they would be safe from the ones that are looking for them. I wish I had somebody in here. I'm just trying to make this sense. Somebody do me a favor and let God know how appreciative you are for being his fortress. Because when the enemy came looking for you, when your enemies and your foes came upon you to eat up your flesh. They stumbled and fell because he hid you in his pavilion. I wish I had somebody in the room that knew who God really was. He's my safe place. Tap three people and tell them he's my safe place. He's my safe place. Oh, he speaks. He watched this because in the text, you got to understand the climate that they find themselves in. Y'all help me, I only had about two hours with this. He, the countries in the old scriptures were, were written, the scriptures were written with incessant warfare around them. Which means there was always 
calamity, wars, and rumors of wars. Y'all know since Trump been in office, it seems like every week something about to jump off. Whether overseas or here at home. Somebody talk back to me if you know what it is to have to worry about some warfare. Listen, countries in the old, they, 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 were always, uh, they were always on edge because warfare was always imminent. It was always about to jump off. Men were continuously exposed to hostile inroads and invasions. And the man of God said to them, he said, even in hostile environments, and in incessant warfare, God will be your refuge. The Lord is good. He's my stronghold. Here it is. He is my stronghold when? In the time of trouble. In, the, in trouble. Somebody say in trouble. In domestic trouble. He's our stronghold. In, uh, in domestic and in Personal trouble, he's our stronghold. In national trouble, he's our stronghold. In other words, it doesn't matter where your trouble comes from. God says, I will fight the trouble off of you. All right. All right. Somebody ought to give God praise right there. He said, I will fight the trouble off of you. I will be your strength and support. And I think I have a few people that can look back over your life and testify that I'm here today because the Lord has been your stronghold. He was your strength. He was your shelter in the time of the storm. You would not be here if it had not been for the Lord getting in the fight with you and having your back and beating back the hand of the enemy. The last time I read it, the Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. Do me a favor. Find you a neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. I'm safe today because he's been my stronghold. When rain comes, God said, I'll protect you. When trouble comes, God said, I will cover you. He will safeguard us. He will preserve us. He will defend us. He will shield us. He will cushion us. He will insulate us. He will hedge us. He will screen us. He will secure us. He will fortify us. He will guard us. He will keep us. The last time I read it, the Bible says, for in the time of trouble, he will hide me in his pavilion in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. Do me a favor and high five three people and tell them I'm going to make it because he's my stronghold. Oh, I wish I had some help in here. Tell somebody I'm going to make it because the Lord's got my back. I'm going to make it. Yes, I am. I'm going to make it because the Lord is my stronghold. Yeah. Lord is good. Lord is my stronghold in the time of trouble. Then the prophet says he knows them that trust in him. I wish I had somebody. The Lord is my stronghold. And then the prophet said he knows them that trust him. Some of y'all still ain't got it. He's my stronghold. Then the prophet said, he knows them that trust him. So I thought at least the folks that trust him will get with me right through here. I said, he knows them that trust. In other words, in other words, those who avail themselves to him as their stronghold, those that flee to him in trouble. God says, watch this. He will know you. Watch this because many of us, Judge Kokra, Kokra, uh, when we get in trouble, we trust ourselves. When we get in trouble, we trust our finances. When we find ourselves in trouble, we trust our own strength. Uh, but the Bible says when you trust him, 
He knows you. Oh, we put our trust in everything but the one that can truly keep us. We put our trust in things that give a false hope of security. We put our trust in people that really don't have strength at all, but we put our trust in what they can do for me. But if I got anybody in here, tap three people and tell them you can't put your trust in people like I, like I learned. The only one that will keep you when you need to be kept. The only one that will pick you up when you fall down. The only one that can turn things around is my Lord and Savior. Do I have anybody in here that knows what it is to have to lean and depend? Oh, listen. But can, can I tell you, can I tell you what man can give you is all insufficient. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, it is. I remember a day, I remember the hour, I would go to the ATM machine <laughs> and look to make a withdrawal. Uh -huh. get one. I wish I had some real folks in here. Yeah. 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 I'm in need yeah. of some resources. No matter how great or small. And I would go and put in my code. And I would get a message that would bounce back to me. Where it would read insufficient. I got some folk in here. Where are the real saints at that know what I'm talking about? When you go looking and call somebody, you get a message that says, insufficient funds. You go to call on your prayer partner and they don't answer, but you get a message that says the last time I read it, he said, I'll never leave you. That deserves a shout right through there. If you know that when you called him, he answered you. When you had a problem, he had an answer for you. Can I get somebody in here just to give God a praise because you know that God will never run out of resources. His line will never be busy. He'll never turn his back on you. But when you need him, he'll show up. When you need encouragement, he'll give it to you. When you need an answer, he'll make a way. Testify to somebody and tell him he did it for me one day. And he keeps on doing it over and over, over and over, over and over. Again, Tech says, he knows them. He knows them. He knows them. Tap three people and tell them he knows them. I'm ready to get back in my seat. He knows them. Huh? But that means the, the one he knows are the ones that trust him. He knows them. In other words, he takes inventory of those that put their confidence in him. He doesn't just know you for the sake of knowing you, but he knows you to do something for you. I said he knows you for the sake of doing something for you. Tap three people and tell them if the Lord knows you, you got something good on the way. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here. Tap three people and tell them if God knows you, then you ought to get excited because something good it's right around the corner. If God knows your name, that means he's putting your name on your next blessing. Tap three people and tell them God's got something good in store for me. Why? Because he knows me. And he knows me by name. He, he takes inventory uh, in, in that he distinguishes them from other people. He approves them from other people so that he can deliver and save them. Because he knows them. He wants to bless and reward them because he knows them. I wish I had somebody that got this. God is watching you. Uh -huh. I need you to get this. God is watching you. Oh. God is watching you. And he's watching you as you go through. And he's taking note of whether or not you're trusting him. Oh, God, I don't know 
know we're going to shout here today. Hallelujah. I know we ain't going to shout because I ain't got nobody on the organ. Some of y'all don't move unless you hear the right key. But he, God says, God says, Prophetess Joanne, I'm watching you. And I'm taking inventory of those that put their trust and confidence in me. And if you trust me, I know you. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Because if you trust him, he says, I know you. Which means if you don't trust him. That's why some of us are crying because he don't. And we so distrust and we get back. Oh, he said, I'm, I'm, I'm watching. I'm watching to see who they're going to call. I, I, I'm watching to see who they're talking to. I, I'm watching to see who they're going to turn to. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Here it is. Watch this. Watch this because if I got any honor saints in here, uh, you don't like everything that's in front of you. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. You don't agree with everything that's happening. No. Yeah. But watch this. God's watching your response. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Here it is. Uh, we're, 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 we're trying to teach. We're trying to teach one of our. Uh, Lord have mercy. I'm owed him a real good gift. Uh, we're trying to teach my son that he can't mimic the behaviors he see everybody else do. Oh, I know. I'm trying. To, I'm helping somebody tonight, today. Listen, it's it's amazing that when he leaves the home. It comes back home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He returns with behaviors yeah. that don't line up with what yeah. the house taught him. I'm trying to stay right here. I'm trying not to. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing that when he spends time with other people, yeah. his peers, yeah. he comes back mimicking behaviors. That his peers exhibited. Yeah. Oh, listen, listen. And sometimes I got to beat those behaviors out of me. I thought I'd get at least two, three parents that would give me a high five and talk back to me right through here. Y'all act like y'all children have always done the right thing, made the best decisions. Because, no. Some of y'all act like y'all always made the right decisions and did. The Bible tells us there's a time for everything. There's a time to talk. And there's a time. Why our classrooms is off the chain. Uh -huh. yeah. That's why our streets is off the chain. That's why, that's why your house is off the chain. Y'all yeah. right. right. thought I wasn't coming down that street. I'm here now. <laughs> Some of your sanctified houses that you claim to be all right. You got to sleep with one eye open because you got children running amok in your household because you don't know how to discipline them when it's time. Y'all forgive me, that's the educator side of me coming out right through there. Because then you send them to school and want to cuss the teacher out because somebody want to hold them accountable. Talk about it, Pastor. Stay right there. Tell the truth. He, he knows them. That trust in him. He, he knows them, which means, which means I distinguish who belongs to me. I, he, he, he said, I approve those that trust me. I will deliver those that 
put their confidence in me. I will bless those and reward those that put their trust in me. Those who trust in him shall be guided through perplexities. Those who trust him will be sustained in your weaknesses. Those that trust him will be delivered in times of danger. Watch this. Even when your flesh and heart fails, God said, I will be your strength. Yeah. Let me see who I'm preaching to this morning. If you can say that the Lord knows you, somebody giving praise. No, no, no. If you can say that the Lord knows you, some of y'all ain't clapping. You're telling on yourself. If you know that the Lord knows you, somebody give him some praise. If somebody ain't said nothing yet, I, 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 you better move your seat because the Lord don't know him. It's amazing. It's amazing he just gave me this. He, it's amazing. How those that don't trust him correlates to those that create drama in everybody else's life. I just said something. If you can't trust him, you create chaos everywhere you go. And I bet, and I bet the very ones that cause hell in the church, cause hell at home, that cause hell on the job are the ones that have trouble trusting God. And if you can't trust God, you can't trust other people. Amen. Amen. I don't think you fully understand the gravity of what I just asked you. If the Lord knows you, that means that you trust him. Do me a favor, encourage somebody and tell three people, if you belong to him, you will put your trust in him. Do I have anybody in here that can testify that he never failed you? Oh, don't lie. Don't, don't play with it. I said, how many can testify that he's never failed you? Do I have anybody that can tell somebody that there is no failure in him? Find somebody close to you and say, neighbor, I can tell you firsthand that he won't fail you. You just have to put your trust in him. If you trust him, he will be your friend. If you trust him, he will be your family. If you trust him, he will be your strength. If you trust him, he'll be your doctor in a sick room. If you trust him, he'll be your lawyer in a courtroom. If you trust him, he'll be your cardiologist. If you trust him, he'll be your ophthalmologist. If you trust him. He'll be a psychiatrist if you trust him. He'll be a healer if you trust him. He'll make a way out of no way. Do I have anybody in here that can testify that I trusted him one day? And he did just what he said. I am that I am. I'll be what you need me to be. Lord is good. He's my stronghold. And he knows them that trust in him. Oh. Mm. Listen, elder, you got me thinking about a, a, a pound cake. I think I was prophetic. <laughs> <laughs> when you talked about that red spatula. Uh -huh. And I was able to connect with that because we have a red spatula. Uh -huh. So I can see what God was saying mm -hmm. even when we don't have a response. I just said something. Yes, I hear what the Lord's saying to me. Yes, yes. Sometimes you don't have an immediate response. Oh, See, I just lost some of the deep wonders in this room because some of y'all got an answer for everything. Ah! 
Y'all so deep in the word, y'all can quote scripture, you can regurgitate it. But when life really hits you, sometimes you don't have any. Oh, listen, just by the show of hands, I don't want nobody to move, buck, or run. But just by the show of hands, y'all be honest. When life hits you sometimes, you don't have a scripture or prayer or anything that you can say. Here it is. Here it is. God says, he says, I know them that trust me, which means, which means I'm watching to see how you respond. I'm going to elevate you. I'm going to pour my oil on you. I'm going to push you. And I'm going to do it not because of who you are, but because of who I am. And because you, you trust who I am, my oil's going to flow. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, he's just trying to bring all this together because, because, uh, because, listen, this, this thing jumped off out of nowhere. He came and gave us his word, Dr. Bradley, where he said, if you don't trust me, I'm going to remove you. I'm only repeating and closing this message. He said, if you can't trust me, I'm going to need to get you out the way. Here it is. Jesus went to go heal. And before he healed, he said, I need all doubters. Jesus said, I need every one of you. Matter of fact, all you mourners, all of you that want to cry and complain, I need for you to step out the room. Don't nobody take offense to this, but I hear the Lord say it. Don't take offense to this. Do me a favor. Tap your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you don't believe him, get out the way. If, listen. Our prayer is that you trust him, but listen, what he's doing, he needs believers. He needs people that are going to put their trust in him. Mm. Oh, I just saw miracles happening. I just saw healings taking place. I just saw Debt cancellations. Listen, I just saw, here it is. This messed me up. Here it is. This messed me up. Thank you, uh, Cancer Support Group. You went on your walk yesterday. You went on your walk yesterday. And Deacon Brown, listen what the Lord just showed me. He said, even in that, I healed, I healed the wound. But there was a scar that was left. And he said, watch this, if you can trust me, uh -huh. yeah. whew, I will heal the scars that are in your mind. Wow. Because here, here it is, here it is. God can deliver you from it, but there's yet oftentimes a battle in your mind. Because the enemy will try to put it back in front of your face to get you to distrust who God is and what he's saying. I'm done. Listen. Listen. God says in Nahum, I'm come to reassure you that if you trust me, all things will work out for your good. Woo. Uh, listen, listen, <clears throat> listen, I, I, I need to say this with all sincerity. I need to say this with all sincerity. Uh, oh. Take 
a serious moment of inventory and ask God to help your unbelief. Because as God had me speak this message, the more I spoke, the lower your head got. The more the Lord was speaking, the heavier you felt the weight. And those are the people God says, I need you to trust me. You don't have to agree, but I need you to trust me. And he said, if you can trust me, I'll carry you. Everybody standing. Everybody standing. I need everybody holding hands with your neighbor. I need everybody holding hands with your neighbor. This is an intentional moment. This is not an emotional response. But I want to pray a prayer. And then I'm going to ask Pastor Wimbush to come and open the doors of the church. But before we open the doors of the church, <coughs> I want to pray this simple prayer because the Lord said enough is enough. And as I brought judgment on Nineveh, I'm bringing judgment upon us. So God, it's my humble prayer and request that your people that have heard your word would accept the word that has been spoken. God, I pray that if there's been any doubt, mm -hmm. that you will forgive us now. Yes, Lord. Yes. Create within us a clean yes. heart yes. and renew within us the right yes. spirit. Yes. God, we trust you. And if there be any doubt, help us with our unbelief. Mm -hmm. If we've been flat out disobedient, God forgive us. I pray, God, that your mercy and your grace will allow for restoration to take place. God, there's somebody here under the sound of my voice that's been in a struggle because of life circumstances. And their trust in you has dwindled, if not evaporated. But God, you sent your word to heal us. You sent your word to deliver us. And I thank you that you gave a word today to confirm the prophetic word that went forth. God, it's my sincere prayer that we will be the people that you called us to be. And any obstacle, any hindrance, any setback that will prevent us from being who you called us to be, I plead the blood over it now. And I speak that the assignment is destroyed. God, use us for your glory. Allow us to advance your kingdom. 
God, I can't go, I cannot pray a prayer against your will. So I only ask that you do what you said you would do. I love them, but if they need to go, God dismiss them. Dismiss them out of our lives. Dismiss them from our space. Dismiss them from our ministries. Dismiss them from the church. Because God, if you dismiss them, then they're still in your hands. And you can do with them what you deem necessary to restore them back to their rightful place. Let your will be done. And we pray, God, that we won't be in the way of it. We thank you in advance. We thank you in advance. For your word is true. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can somebody give God praise? Can somebody give God praise?